and Kip Woods. The Show Me State is blessed with an abundance of clear water springs. These blue waters, surrounded by lush green vegetation, give life to many streams and rivers in the state. There are over 1,100 springs in Missouri. Today, we'll take a look at just a few. Also today on Missouri Outdoors, we'll take the plunge, take a quiz, and take the fifth. Right, remain silent. But first, it's time to check your nature knowledge with national champion turkey caller, Ralph Duran. If you want to bring an animal in close, try sounding the dinner bell. Predators recognize the noises made by their prey and come closer to investigate. This sound could draw in a coyote or bobcat. Do you know what animal it is? Is the sound a fawn makes. Predators know that, so fawns don't make noise very often. When they do, they're hoping for someone else, mama. Stay tuned, we've got plenty more coming up next on this edition of Missouri Outdoors. You'll find springs in all regions of the Show Me State, but the greatest number are located in the Ozarks of central and southern Missouri. And while there are many springs, there are still a lot of questions about these natural wonders that remain unanswered. What we do know is their waters are cool. They have a constant temperature between 56 and 59 degrees. A lot of water pours out of them, millions and millions of gallons each day. Big Spring near Van Buren is the largest spring in the state. An average of 275 million gallons of water flows from the spring each day. And that changes daily depending on the amount of rainfall. But where does the water come from? It comes from the surface, down through the soil and rock, and in many cases, the water travels several miles underground before exiting at a spring outlet. At Big Spring, some water travels from as far as 50 miles away. There's approximately 56,000 miles of free-flowing streams in Missouri. Stretched end to end, that would be like traveling from Kansas City to St. Louis 224 times. One of the reasons that we try to utilize a road check in our wildlife law enforcement is because it gives us an opportunity to contact hunters and potential violators at a time when we normally can't contact them and that's when they're transporting wildlife. You know, actually having the Highway Patrol cooperate with the Conservation Department on road checks is very effective. Uh, they're able to address certain uh, concerns that they have with traffic safety, uh, driving while intoxicated, driving while revoked, a situation such as that, and they're able to coordinate that very well with our desire to check hunters who are using the highways at the same time. Most of the law-abiding public is supportive of, of these these types of activities and and uh, these efforts. Looks like you guys had a pretty good, pretty good weekend. Just today, you got all these. Uh, one one yet yeah, one's cut up yesterday. The two two does today. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. It's all six. We missed three. Did you really? Yep. Well, good enough. Thank you very much. Yep. On Ford, uh, I think it's good to help control things. Yep, we got uh, got enough stuff going on the way it is. Yep, keep everything legal. Here we go. If you had any wrong on with you, no, sir. Let's just pull over to the shoulder here. So Whose is this dude? Well, sir, we, uh, that's the one of the boys that was up there. We're just hauling it back. You have it labeled, sir, with who's no, tagged sir, or anything on it? We don't have it. Who is it, that, who is it that killed the deer, sir? Uh, that's mine. Okay. How many deer in here, sir? Uh, that's one and a part of another one. Okay, who belongs to the other one? Well, I shot them both. Okay, if I talk to your passenger up there, is that what he's going to tell me as yes, well? Sir. I'm going to do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Stand easy here. 
Who belongs to all those deer back there? Well, they're mine, I guess. Okay. Let me let me read you something here. Okay. I want to read you your Miranda rights. This is for my protection as well as yours. You understand what I'm telling you here? Yeah. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer in heaven present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any question. We would like to think that most people don't intentionally violate the wildlife laws, that mostly it's a situation of opportunity. Most of those types of crimes are, are opportunistic for the most part. People just get a little carried away with the emotions and the, and the times and, and uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but it does happen. That's just human nature. He says, we're going to clean deer. And he says, I'll put your deer in the cooler, Bill. I said, okay. Who said that? He did. Because... Okay. But we're going to get to the bottom of this, and, and I'd like to have the truth now, uh, rather than detaining the boy and you and, and uh, your friend back here and having to put each of you through any more questioning here. But I'll do it as long as it takes, and I'll play it however you want to do it. But I'd like to have the truth from you, sir. Actually, I guess it turned out that the large gentleman who was the driver of the vehicle, apparently they were trying to protect each other there initially, but the driver did indeed best of our knowledge, kill both of the deer, uh, did not bother to tag or check either of the deer, and realizes the error of his ways. Unfortunately, he's going to have to have learned a hard lesson. Uh, Henry County just called me a while ago and told me that he'd posted a $500 bond on each charge. Yeah, there's a lot of value to the road checks uh, as far as the deterrent value. I, I believe the deterrent is there for the particularly the casual violator. It also gives an opportunity for the people of the state to actually see their conservation department and their highway patrol in action. Oftentimes the things that we do aren't openly visible to the general public, but uh, in seeing us there enforcing the regulations, doing so in a professional way, a courteous way, they're able to get a feel for the things that we do and uh, I think an appreciation for the type of work that we have to do. The Cardinal is perhaps Missouri's most widely known bird. It's easily identified, frequents heavily populated areas, and has a loud, pleasing call. And unlike many other birds, Cardinals do not migrate. Still ahead on Missouri Outdoors, get ready for a pop quiz and some helpful home building tips. Stay tuned, we've got plenty more coming your way next on Missouri Outdoors. The waters that flow from the springs in Missouri are the source of many streams and rivers in the state and home to some of the most scenic beauty in the Midwest. It's also home to many interesting plants, animals, and fish. For trout, these waters are the only natural place cool enough for them to survive year-round in the state. At Bennett Spring near Lebanon, nearly 100 million gallons of water gushes daily from the state's third largest spring. The stream is stocked daily from March through October and provides excellent fishing for rainbow and brown trout. Springs also supply water to the state's other trout parks, including Montauk near Licking. An estimated 43 million gallons of water flows daily to form the main headwaters of the current river. Strap on your boots and get your gear ready. It's time to play the game that's got everybody in an outdoor state of mind. Conservation Quiz. That's right, Conservation Quiz. A game you can play at home that tests your knowledge of a variety of topics relating to Missouri's great outdoors. All questions are worth 10 points. Let's get started. The first category, Hunter Safety. The question, which is the safest way for these two hunters to cross this fence? A, with firearms in hand, carefully climb over the fence. B, unload, pass the firearm to your hunting partner, cross the fence, and then pass the firearm over. C, prop the firearm on the fence, climb over, then retrieve the firearm. The answer is B, 
Unload, pass the firearm to your hunting partner, cross the fence, and then pass the firearm over. In examples A and C, the hunters do not have total control of the muzzle of a loaded firearm, and that could lead to disaster. You can learn more about hunter safety through hunter education classes. Call the Missouri Department of Conservation for the dates and locations near you. The second category, reptiles and amphibians. The question, of the 50 kinds of snakes that reside in Missouri, how many are venomous? A, 3, B, 5, C, 12, D, 27. The answer is B, 5. Missouri's venomous snakes include the copperhead, the cottonmouth, sometimes referred to as the water moccasin, and three species of rattlesnakes. The vast majority of snakes are non-venomous. The category, fishing. True or false, the only trout that can be caught in Missouri are hatchery or farm-raised. The answer is false. Most people are aware of Missouri's trout parks where anglers catch hatchery-raised trout. But for those who like the challenge of its wilder cousin, there are several places in southern Missouri where spring-fed streams supply good breeding habitat for populations of wild rainbow trout. Check state regulations for location size and catch limits. The category, forestry. True or false, from 1970 to 1990, the number of forested acres in Missouri has decreased. The answer is false. The 1990 survey showed Missouri has gained one million acres of forested land in this 20-year period. The next category, natural areas. A natural area, as indicated by this sign, can be described as A. A living museum. B. A part of the landscape that has not been greatly changed by civilization. C. Areas that have been set aside and protected by the state of Missouri. D. All of the above. The answer is D. All of the above. Natural areas are the best examples of Missouri's native prairies, forests, glades, marshes, and other natural communities. Their visitors can experience Missouri in its natural state. Natural areas also serve as models to restore areas that have been altered by civilization. The category, fishing regulations. You are taking your five-year-old grandson fishing. You are 65 years old. Who is required to have a fishing license? A. Just the five-year-old. B. Just the 65-year-old grandfather. C. Neither. D. Both. The answer is C. Neither. Any Missouri resident 15 and under or 65 and over is not required to purchase a fishing permit. All limits and other regulations still apply. The final category, wild game. At one time, the eastern wild turkey and white-tailed deer populations in Missouri were considered dangerously low. True or false? True. In the 1930s, it was estimated that there were only 300 deer and 2,000 turkeys statewide. But thanks to restoration efforts, they're back in a big way, and it's a real success story. Today, their populations are kept in check by hunters with an annual harvest of over 200,000. Surplus turkeys have even been traded to over 20 other states and Canada for otters, falcons, and grouse to help restore their numbers to our state. Now it's time to check your score and determine your conservation IQ. No matter how you did, everybody wins playing Conservation Quiz because the more you understand, the more you can enjoy. Conservation Quiz is brought to you by the Missouri Department of Conservation, keeping you informed about Missouri's outdoors for over half a century. That's all the time we've got for today. I'm Jim Sinclair saying thanks for playing Conservation Quiz and have a safe and happy outdoor experience. Conservation Quiz is an MDC production. Stay tuned, we've got plenty more coming your way on Missouri Outdoors. We'll continue our tour of natural springs in Missouri and go where very few have gone before. But first, here's Dennis Fig with today's handy hint. Today, we're building a nest box for house wrens. You'll need two pieces of wood. I'm using rough sawn cedar. Nails, wood screws, two eye screws, and wire. Following the instructions, carefully measure and cut out the eight parts. Drill a one and one eighth inch diameter hole in the front piece of the house.
Female house wrens like to shop around for a house, so hanging more than one in your yard means she's more likely to stay. If you'd like the building plans, just write to us. We'll have the address for you at the end of the show. Stay where you're at. We'll be right back. The springs of Missouri provide a water source for fishing and floating in the state. They're also a tourist attraction, and over the years, they've been used for other purposes as well. Some springs in Missouri supplied pioneers with salt. Where salt was not present, they were used as water supplies. Years ago, many springs also helped power grist mills to grind grains into flour and cornmeal. Today, only a scattering of mills, like this one at Alley Spring near Eminence, can be found. They also help supply ideas for names of towns and cities. From Cedar Springs to Climax Springs, there's Excelsior Springs, Bennett Springs, Sweet Springs, Salem Spring, Weldon Spring, Lake Spring, Edgar Springs, El Dorado Springs, and Springfield. There are several springs in Missouri that are called Blue Spring, but this one is the deepest. It's also one of the most mysterious. Only a handful of divers have been allowed to see what lies in these blue waters near Eminence. It's been restricted to both protect divers and the natural setting of the spring. If one poorly controls its buoyancy and bangs into the wall, and breaks off a formation that has taken uh, several thousand years to form, uh, it's gone. It can't be replaced, we can't glue it back, we can't fix it, it's just gone forever. But in 1995, a team of divers were preparing to go where no one had gone before, to a depth of 340 feet and beyond. First team, two video guys, you're down. Ready, D? Ready. Ready, Paul? <laughs> We feel that we're getting to look at just the fingertip of what's actually below the surface of Missouri here. And there's a great deal more passage that we'll never see uh, due to the limitations of technology. The dangers associated with diving at these depths can be great. And without proper training, experience, and preparation, even fatal. Because we're diving under solid rock the whole time, there's no airspace up near the ceiling. Uh, there's no way for us to surface if we have uh, an out-of-air emergency or anything else that might occur. Permission was granted to this team with the understanding that their findings would be furnished to the state to allow everyone the chance to learn more about Blue Spring. The expedition was spearheaded by Andy Henges from Rolla. All of us were interested in Blue Spring, but Andy was the one that said, I want to do a project there and I'm going to commit my time and my resources to make it happen. Andy and the crew made several preliminary dives in preparation for the big dive, but Andy never made it. He was killed in a car accident on a late summer night in mid-Missouri. Andy was uh, had a, <laughs> 10 times more energy than any two of us and was able to get uh, some backing from the university. That allowed him to do some fairly complex measurements here, fairly complex mapping, and uh, allowed us to get uh, frankly, access here. Without Andy, the project was halted. But the diving crew decided not to let his dream die with him. As a tribute, they decided to continue the expedition. It was his project from the beginning. We're simply going to be uh, finishing it up for him. Although a record dive would not be made, several more dives would produce video that captures the underwater beauty that has up till now been seen by only a few. We've seen a magnificent cave that is just so huge that uh, when we enter it, we really can't see all the, from one wall to the other. There's large passageways. Sometimes when you go through a, a small area, then it'll open up into another big, huge room. And uh, when it does that, you go, wow, this is awesome. And there's, a lot of overhangs in different areas. There's uh, quite a few fish that are swimming in and out of this one because there's so much light that actually penetrates. When you get back into the further distances that you get into, then you can actually see some blind cave fish from time to time. 
We've been to depths of 140 feet in here and turned around. While we did not have direct line of sight to the opening at that point, you could still see reflected ambient light from the cave tunnel uh, down to that uh, depth. It's a very special feeling for me, and I feel like it's a privilege for me to be able to see that either for the first time or in some cases uh, just be one of the very few people that have actually seen it. It's a difficult thing to describe. It's not a thrill. It's not like jumping out of an airplane. Uh, it's a quiet, personal thing. And sometimes uh, in a passage that's uh, kind of silty and looks like it hasn't been disturbed in eons, you get kind of an unusual feeling of truly ancient history as you quietly swim through that, that passage. We're here for a very short time. And if we're really going to enjoy it, we need to keep our eyes open to the whole world around us and grasp the wonder, the beauty, the color, the lights, the shades, the interrelationship, our impact on, on this world, and this world's impact on us. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, if you get the chance, why not head out and enjoy Missouri's outdoors? That's where I'll be. See you next time. For more information on today's handy hint, write to us at this address. Be sure to include the specific name of the hint.